a complete and total mess. But let's just try and be fair here. Um, Batman and Robin. This is seen as the worst Batman film ever made. And I'm not too sure how much I agree with that. But again, the notion that this is the worst Batman film ever made, that this film is an abomination, it's a disgrace, it stinks, it is terrible, it is awful. That is what we're told, that is what the streets give us, that Batman Robin is the worst film. So look, so the first things first, George Clooney. Clooney is the is literally Bruce Wayne from the comics. If you look at the comics and you look at George Clooney, that is Bruce Wayne. George Clooney is a very good actor. He's a very good actor. And I think if the film was done in a different way, I do feel that George Clooney would have made a very good Batman and Bruce Wayne. Because there's, as bad as Batman and Robin is, and we'll get there, probably one of the best scenes in any Batman film is his scene with him and Alfred. And just as like, damn it, if only Joel Schumacher had taken this dramatic tone throughout the whole film. I think for Joel Schumacher, I think he took what Batman Forever was. Remember, Batman Forever was a pretty good box office success. It was actually a pretty popular film. So, and um, one just said, oh, double down on Batman Forever. So he just went, oh, I'll double down and I'll just go even crazier and even wackier. Which is where we have um, <laughs> our dear good friend Batman and Robin, man. Um, so, look, the film was wild. But, again, I'll get to the bounce, but let, let's look at the, the, the good stuff out of the way. Allow me to break the ice. Who killed the dinosaur? The Ice Age! Who put his of a Gotham? I don't care how much you abuse or insult this film. Arnold Schwarzenegger was hilarious. And he stole the show. It was his film. He took over, he, he took over the, the, the entire film, and I think... When he just saw all of his oneness and all of his eyes frozen ponds and everything, it was like, it's, it's, um, it is, it, allow me to break the ice. It what it was. So, I think if not for Schwarzenegger bringing in Arnie in that film, I think this would have been even much more of a, of a greater mess. So I think that's where all the good things end. It, it, it just got too crazy. It's, it's got too, it's got too much. But you know what? At the time, 97, it was a shock to the system because as Batman Forever was crazy, but it still had a little bit of dramatic edge. This just went, I think they went to space at one point. I think there was a freaking bat card at one point. I think Bob Robin actually ended up in freaking space. So this was madness. This was complete madness. But despite all of that, um, when you watch it now, knowing what you know, you can laugh at it because I remember because I remember seeing it like recently, like um, a few years ago, and I, and I actually just find I just find it laughable and enjoyable just how ridiculous it is. So rather than just say, "Oh my God, this is an awful film," turn it off. You're like, "How crazy is this thing going to get?" And it's bro, at a point they're playing freaking hockey with the bad guys. So you just laugh at just how crazy this thing is because it's mad. This film is completely and utterly really mad, and I think that. Because, you know, because George Schumacher, he came out recently and he said that he apologizes for what he did. Because I think for George Schumacher, he, I really do feel that he was just going from the direction of what Warner wanted. Because remember, Warner wanted to go in a totally different direction, in a lighter direction from Batman Returns. You know, all this can actually be blamed on Batman Returns based on how dark it was. So he wanted us to completely go in a different direction from Batman Returns, which was Batman Forever. It wasn't a critical success, but it was a box office success. I mean, Batman Forever was a popular film because you had the music, Jim Carrey, it was popular. And then they just said, bro, go even... So because Batman Forever worked, let's now um, go even lighter. But I think what you saw in Batman Robin was it's... it's the film was too crazy, so it didn't really capture the kind of young audience the way that Batman Forever was. And I think, of course, kids enjoyed it, but it's they watched it and then they just for, 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 forgot about it. So the kids didn't fall in love with it as much as they did with Batman Forever or with the first Batman film. So then you now have the Batman fans where, okay, you've now turned what is a very serious character and what's a very serious character in the first two films into a complete and utter joke. 
And I think that it felt like you, it was just completely insulting. But you know what? As time has gone by, I've, I think people have softened towards Batman and Robin, you know, because you saw Clooney apologizing. Joe Schumacher, obviously, before he unfortunately passed away, he said, I'm sorry and everything. I don't think you need to apologize. That was a take. And you, in your own right, succeeded for the kind of mad, wacky take that it was. Because I always have to remind this about people. Joe Schumacher is not a bad director. Watch Film Booth with, um, with Kiefer Sutherland and Colin Farrell, who's obviously in the new Bound film. Go watch Falling Down with Michael Douglas. Watch Lost Boys, again, with Kiefer Sutherland and the two chorus. Like, flat line, line, line is like, this guy is a damn good filmmaker. He's, and he's made really good, good films. So you say to yourself that, why? Because, you know, I almost wish that because of Batman and Robin, Joe Schumacher had a really bad name, and I think it's really affected him in the industry because rather than Joe Schumacher's name being linked in with the amazing Lost Boys or with um, Falling Down, his name was linked in with, oh, you made the worst Batman film ever, and you pretty much tanked an entire franchise, and people had to walk right from the freaking depths and the arches to, pre to pretty much bring this back to fruition. So, I understand that, man. But I think, look, man, the way I view Mama Robin is, it's not a good film. It is a very bad film. But it's one of those bad films that if you're drunk, you've got nothing to do, or you're half asleep, you can watch it. See, there are some bad films that are unwatchable, where you can't even end. But I think this is one of those bad films that in in the right mood and so forth you can watch this and laugh like schwarzenegger is hilarious the things that they do it's so ridiculous and so mad it's hilarious what freaking batman and robin get and get up to man but yeah man it's, it's i mean it was a low point man it was it, it was a very low point man and um but again in an, in an alternate universe and this is what not people will not really pick up on Give put George Clooney in a um with in a more serious film, or give George leave George Clooney with George Schumacher, but tell them that make it serious, make it more because for me, I feel George Clooney actually was better. Like, think about it, despite all the madness around him, I felt George Clooney's performance, specifically as Bruce Wayne, was better than Val Kilmer's performance as Bruce Wayne. You know, because you could just tell that there was a lot more depth and texture to what George Clooney was doing with Bruce Wayne than what your guy Valkyrie was doing with Bruce Wayne. So you just wish, you just, I just wish that if, under different circumstances, they were able to say what's up with a different tone and, and approach, we would have gotten a very interesting Batman. But alas, the franchise had to go down and someone had to take up the mantle and rise Batman from the ashes.